new exhibit here at the Newburger Museum features maps, but not in the way you might expect. I'm Sarah Waring, and I'll have that story. Hollywood is here at our own campus. I'm Jayla Morales. I'll have that story coming up. Welcome to Dateline MJP, a production of the Summer Youth Program at Purchase College. I'm Isabel Schindler. And I'm Brandon Ross. Here's what's happening around campus. At the Newburger Museum of Art, a new exhibit is displaying maps that are anything but ordinary. Sarah Waring tells us how the exhibition expands the boundaries of mapping. What this gate commemorates is the lives of those slaves, as you'll see up on the top of it. There's actually a ground penetrating radar of the ground beneath purchase, showing voids in the dirt where they believe the slaves are buried. I would hope that people learn a lot about the context of what's going on around them and especially beneath them. Everything has a foundation and ultimately it's not really something that you're going to see in your everyday life. Even the internet infrastructure, the dirt where the graves are, everything was built on top of something else. And I hope that little bit of context is something that can put their lives in perspective. Landed, surveying new geographies, isn't the only exhibit here at the Newburgh Museum, where even the elevators are works of art. I'm Sarah Ware for Dateline MJP. If you're interested in movies, this next story is just for you. A summer youth program for all future filmmakers is now in session at SUNY Purchase College. Dayton Morales reports. Lights, camera, action. Here at SUNY Purchase College, if it's movies you want, movies are what you're going to get. Deep in the heart of the Purchase College Library is the Digital Media Zone, where students are currently working on editing their movies, which will be presented at the end of the course. Lindsay S., one of the students here at this program, is working with two other students on editing their movie. Our screenplay was about um, you had to ask for a favor from a person, and our favor was to ask for a book. Sasha D, another student at the program, is also working on movie editing. She joined this program at the last minute. I decided to try it out and I really like it. Sasha says that she likes writing stories such as realistic fiction and that her love for creating stories will help her with her writing skills in the future. John Paul Morgan, who is the instructor of this course, is coaching the students on how they can make the movie look better. So we teach the kids the, uh, how to shoot a scene, so that's called coverage. And then, uh, then we talk about editing, and then of course the last piece is writing, which is maybe the most important piece. How to write a screenplay in proper screenplay format. If I have a screenplay, I can give it to you and you can say, oh, can I play the part of Max, the bad guy? And I can say, sure. The Young Filmmakers Program is in effect from July 25th to August 5th and is one of the many activities offered here at SUNY Purchase College. Jayla Morales, Dateline, MJP. When you think of art, you might think of paintings, drawings, or maybe even sculptures. But high school students at SUNY Purchase are proving that art can be functional. Hannah Chang has the story. Tatiana and Catherine are two students getting an insight into the world of ceramics. The Ceramic Selective is a part of a four-week visual art intensive offered by SUNY Purchase's Summer Youth Program. All students in the visual art intensive spend their mornings either sculpting or drawing and break up into their chosen electives after lunch. The ceramic selective is taught by Mari Ogihara, a professor at nearby Manhattanville College. And we're only two people, so it's really nice. We get a lot of focus and attention on what we're doing and our mistakes, and we get a lot of corrections and advice, which is nice. Tatiana and Catherine are both looking to expand their artistic horizons. I picked ceramics because it's really out of my comfort zone. I normally draw or paint, so I wanted to try something new. I chose ceramics class because it's something I never really do at school. They don't offer ceramics. I really wanted to discover something new. Ogihara, however, has been doing ceramics for years. I got into clay when I was in high school, and I had a really great pottery teacher. And so uh, I've been in love with it ever since, and I've been doing it uh, beyond um, schooling. I've been doing it for the past 10 years. Both students have only positive things to say about Ogihara and the class. Mari is incredible. She's so she's very hands-on and she's so helpful. And I'm really lucky to be learning with her. 
both students will leave with an expanded knowledge of ceramics and lots of kitchenware, both will last a lifetime. From the Visual Arts Building on the campus SUNY Purchase, I'm Hannah Chang, Dateline MJP. If you're looking to be the next Justin Bieber or Adina Menzel, the professors at SUNY Purchase have a program to get you on your way. Students are learning everything from scale, scales to glottal stops. PJ Loden has the story. If you walk in the door at SUNY Purchase this summer, you have a good chance of hearing singing echoing down the hall. From Smash Mouth to Shakira to Sondheim, these inspired students are taking the next step to start. This is the school's youth and pre-college program, where students with ages ranging from 12 to 16 can get a good taste of the field they're interested in. These 14 kids are getting a deep look into the art of performance in their intensive two-week vocal course. One of the students, Sydney N, has had singing instructors since she was young. Like it's a good thing to have because it helps boost your confidence and stuff and I've just, I've loved it ever since. So. The head teachers, Regina Leon and Kimberly Hockey, work with each student individually to help them get a better grip on their voices and vocal technique. The course concludes with a cabaret style performance where the students perform both individually and in duets on August 5th. Until then, they will be working hard on vocal technique, understanding the deeper meanings and lyrics, and of course, their songs. You really want to come outside of your comfort zone, take risks, explore possibilities, learn everything there is in two weeks about approaching a piece of music, and then go on to the rest of the summer to keep singing happily and go into school to your musical, your chorus happily. This is the program for you. From the Music Conservatory, PJ Loden, Dateline, and JP. That's all for this first edition of Dateline MJP. I'm Isabel Schindler. And I'm Brandon Ross. Our next edition starts right now. Here at Purchase, the study of Shakespeare would not be complete without a little martial arts training. Uh, I'm Matt Filetti, that's a story coming up. Students are learning architecture now so that they will be able to build a brighter future one day. I'm Charles Jolly and I'll have that story. Welcome to Dateline MJP 2nd Edition. I'm Andre Costin. And I'm Emma Christopher. Architecture is an intriguing yet difficult course of study. However, that is not stopping some students from taking this rigorous course to see if architecture suits them. Charles Jolly has the story from the Purchase Visual Arts Building. Students taking the Young Architects Summer Course have been learning and mastering many different types of architectural perspectives. William H. is one of the few students in the class who hope to be an architect one day. And we're learning how to use AutoCAD, which is really fun. The students are learning at different paces. They have learned about the flow of rooms and where to set up the furniture by putting them down on sheets and looking from a bird's eye view. I've learned a lot about different types of architectures, like Roman architecture and Greek architecture. In addition, I learned how to scale drawings, so one side is proportional to the other. The students also put their works on the board for their classmates and teachers to marvel at the students' pieces. Alexandra Diaz, one of the instructors, has high expectations for the level of their work. Always draw, always be drawing, always look around you and notice how far things are apart from each other, how wide a door is, things like that. They still have a few more days to increase their talents and passion for architecture. From the Visual Arts Building, this is Charles Jolly, Dayline, and JP. When most people think of Shakespeare, they think of Hamlet or Romeo and Juliet. But what if some Jackie Chan was thrown in? As some high school students are learning, stage combat was an integral part of Shakespeare's plays. Matt Forletti has the story. The sound and fury of Shakespeare, though in this summer pre-college course, Shakespearean drama really starts with language. I to you for gold to pay my legions, which you denied me. These students are learning about Shakespeare from an experienced actor. The most fun is when the students themselves begin to catch fire and they surprise me with what they come up with without my having to say anything. I've always liked Shakespeare and I love the language even though sometimes it's hard to understand. Always pictured myself like acting to it, you know, being Lady Macbeth or something. And the play Macbeth ends with a dramatic sword fight to the death. But in this one day workshop on stage combat, kids will be happy just learning how to fake a punch. The way that I teach this art 
the fundamentals are the same. Once you pick a specific medium, there are details that have to change. <gasps> On stage, we have to do what's called a nap in order to make that sound live so that when you're getting that punch, you actually hear something. Even though society today does not like violence or does not approve of it, humans will always be drawn to it because it is part of what you are. And that, and it's a brilliant storytelling tool. A slap can tell 4,000 stories depending on how and when it's done. At their day of Shakespeare, one cannot help but ask, to be or not to be. But I'll let you decide. I'm Matt Filetti, Dateline, MGP. Many kids across the country love to read comic books. However, few are taking the initiative to create their own comics. Well, some pre-college students at SUNY Purchase are doing just that. Brandon Ross reports. Comics is a, a much more complex uh, art form than they ever realized, that there's things going on uh, within comics that the creators do to uh, manipulate their sense of what's happening in the narrative. I feel like he knows a lot. Like he always, um, he has, like he has lots of references when he shows us stuff. Like some, and like it's like he knows the people in the business. So it's like he's very experienced about it. When you're drawing comics, everything you draw, whatever the script calls for, has to be drawn at the same high level of convincingness. So. If you're drawing, if you draw people well, but your horses are weak, and you have to draw a story of someone riding a horse, and the horse looks bad, guess where the reader's eye is going to go? It's not going to go on that gorgeously drawn human you drew. It's going to go to that wonky looking horse. By the end of the program on August 5th, the students will have created their own five page comic, with characters like this lady taking the main lead. Reporting from SUNY Purchase, I'm Brendan Ross, Dateline MJP. With the polar ice caps melting and the threat of climate change greater than ever, one local college is becoming more sustainable. Isabel Schindler shows us how this campus is going green. At first glance, Purchase College looks like any other idyllic suburban school. Yet behind the lush quads and tree-lined sidewalks is a mission to turn Purchase into an eco-friendly environment, starting with the plants that grow all over campus. Almost all the plants found at Purchase, from the grasses to the trees, are native to the area. This is part of a concerted effort by school officials to both cultivate and protect the campus's native plant life. We only really want to keep those plants that are indigenous to the area so that the water savings um, and the landscape stays as, as beautiful as this campus is. In addition to native planting, many other things have been done to make Purchase a more ecologically friendly school. One of the biggest initiatives is sustainable building. Whenever school officials undertake a new building project, a concerted effort is made to use environmentally friendly building materials. In addition to the building practices, school officials have also been ecologically conscious in regards to both food and transportation. Instead of using gas guzzling and golf carts, they drive electric vehicles which help reduce the carbon footprint. They also take almost all of their unused food and mix it with wood chips in this machine called the rocket, where it is then turned into compost and is used to fertilize the native plant landscaping. For Dateline MJP, I'm Isabel Schindler. That's all for the second edition of Dateline MJP. I'm Emma Christopher. And I'm Andre Costin. Our final edition starts right now. Outdoor art is everywhere here at the Purchase Campus. I'm Katie White and I'll have that story coming up. A new exhibit in Latin American art is drawing in new visitors for its unique pieces. This is Griffin Carter and I'll have the story next. Welcome to Dateline MJP 3rd Edition. I'm Hannah Chang. And I'm PJ Loden. From its founding in 1974, the New Burger Museum has been a groundbreaker in presenting contemporary art. The latest exhibit on Latin American art is no exception. Here's Dateline MJP's Griffin Carter with the story. The Latin American exhibit has a variety of different pieces of art, such as paintings, sculptures, contemporary art, and modern art that come from Latin American history. The art is interesting because it is not only amazing to look at, but also gives the viewer an understanding of what the artist was thinking when making the piece. 
The Latin American exhibit is presented in a viewer-friendly setting with a variety of educational materials intended to make even the most unfamiliar and challenging content accessible to a wide range of visitors. The idea is to feature Latin American art. We have a major in Latin American art. Um, we offer this kind of studies at purchase. So being a university museum, we have this commitment. And also we have an array of works that allow us to touch different topics. Some of the more modern pieces get to be three-dimensional and are mostly about color and motion and how it affects your vision. Even though some can appear to be two-dimensional, they are actually three-dimensional. There are pieces that even have motion to them, like this piece by Carlos Cruz Diaz, which is a motorized construction built in 1968. Mass Rogue is my favorite piece. Come to Purchase College to find yours. This is Griffin Carter for Dateline MJP. The SUNY Purchase campus includes various eye-catching pieces of art that people can view in convenient spots outdoors. Here's Katie White with the story. Here in the heart of the Purchase campus, there isn't just art in the studios and the museums, but there's also art outside for all to see. This work of art at first glance might look like a carved stone, but it's actually cast concrete, created by Wynn Knowlton. This piece is untitled and it was made in 1987 and was donated to the Neuberger. If you look closely, it also has shells. When people pass by it, sometimes they might not notice it, but once you do, you really appreciate its unique qualities. Yeah. Outdoor art is special because it adds a creative touch to dull open spaces. It is always available for people to come and look at whenever they'd like to. There are so many different pieces of art you could pass by on a daily basis that are truly intriguing. From Purchase College, this is Katie White for Dateline MJP. Artistic expression has been around forever, yet there are lesser known art forms such as printmaking. At the SUNY Purchase Pre-College Visual Art Intensive Program, students are crafting eye-catching prints using a variety of techniques. Andre Costin has the story. Color and collaboration are key words in the printmaking class at the SUNY Purchase Summer Pre-College Program in Visual Arts. Walk into the classroom and you will see students working together, sharing paints and coloring the canvas in front of them. In the afternoon, the students break off into electives. Professor Tik Kusina says he's gotten very lucky. They all came to me in the first week with no knowledge of printmaking, but they're already talented at art, so that makes my job a lot easier. Um, everyone has grown so immensely in the program, like their skill and knowledge of printmaking. Printmaking is an art of reproduction, using various methods to copy art. Some students say they like the freedom to create. Pretty much there's no guidelines, you basically do whatever you think of doing. One thing students are doing is silk screening. In this art, students design their work on a mesh screen, which then has paint applied, transferring the design to paper or other media. A major selling point was the collaboration that takes place in the classroom. It's not just about making prints, it's also about being a part of your print community when you're within one. The ultimate goal for the students is to create a colorful, collaborative piece such as this one. From Purchase College, I'm Andre Costin for Dateline MJP. On the campus of SUNY Purchase College, the teaching assistants play a big role helping in various summer programs. The teaching assistants in the pre-college modern journalism program are applauded by the students and teachers for their helpful and impressive performances. Emma Christopher has the story. Marley Lisker and Madeline Sepulveda are constantly on the move following students who need any assistance in helping them with writing and editing. Lisker and Sepulveda are the teaching assistants for the summer pre-college modern journalism program at SUNY Purchase College. The program is a way for aspiring journalists to express their interests by reporting and writing. I feel like they're a lot of help. They are always there when you ask, need to ask a question. They're also just nice people, nice down-to-earth people. Lunchtime is where the TAs especially shine. After escorting the students to the cafeteria, the TAs start telling stories. Their tales of college life, job interviews, and journalism contribute to a conversation and make the atmosphere more open. The teachers of the class, Elliot Lewis and Matt Sampson, both applauded their work. With only one other co-instructor, it's very difficult to give students one-on-one -on -one attention, and that's where the TAs can be very helpful in working one-on-one -on -one with students. They've picked up the editing great, they're working great with the camera work, helping all the kids, so I'm very, very impressed. Both the TAs attended SUNY Purchase College. Lisker already graduated and Sepulveda is going into her sophomore year. So where do they see themselves in 10 years? I see myself going through graduate school and eventually becoming a teacher and then later probably becoming a writer. 
I love any career where you are do constantly doing different things, so I'm hoping that in 10 years I'll be doing something where no two days are ever the same. But day in, day out, the TAs always inspire students with guidance and laughter. From the campus of SUNY Purchase College, this is Emma Christopher for Dateline MJP. That's it for Dateline MJP. Thanks for watching. I'm PJ Loden. And I'm Hannah Chang. Have a good day.